Hey, I'm Gabe, the bag guy, and welcome to another video about bags and tech accessories. So, I got a comment from a user asking me to review the Briggs & Riley's Small Slim Vertical Brief, and here it is. So, I've had the bag for about a week, and some mixed feelings about the bag. Uh, there's definitely some pros and cons. Uh, it retails for $229 from Briggs and Riley and it comes in a ballistic nylon. So this is the ballistic nylon that you kind of see most of the laptop bags, the Dells, the HPs, the Samsonites, they're made out of. Um, and you see the ballistic nylon that Tumi makes his bags out of, but you can obviously see it doesn't look as good as a Tumi bag or as the other high-end name, um, name bags. Um, one thing it does have is a great lifetime warranty. So what I talked to a sales representative from Briggs and Raleigh and they told me that anything can happen with this bag. Uh, you can rip it, it could catch on fire. The longest you can send it in and with a proof of purchase, they will replace the bag or repair it. So it's a bit one big ups for Briggs and Raleigh. The dimensions of the bag are 14 by 11 by three and a half. And when they say three and a half, that's all you're gonna get out of this bag. But we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. If you stuff it, that's when you start getting a lot of the problems. It weighs 3.2 pounds. And I can tell you automatically, it doesn't feel like 3.2 pounds, but I mean, that's what they had on their website. So we're gonna go with the 3.2 pounds. It, it could be carried two ways. One, with the actual carrying strap and Love the carrying strap, it's very, very padded. It also has those little rivets right here. I don't know if you can see that, yeah, you, you can see their indentations, which kind of contours your body. The strap is not removable, so if something happens with the strap, you gotta kind of send it into Briggs and Riders to get another strap. Uh, but it feels really good on the shoulder. Um, one thing that kind of comes to uh, mind is a, you know, a man purse, but it's a little bit like it's more of a elongated and a bigger man purse, but it's still a great bag. On the outside, you have five pockets. There's an outside zipper pocket. There is a full zipper pocket here. There is a hideaway pocket here, quick stash pocket. There is a back uh, quick stash pocket for your strap. If you don't want it, if you don't want to use the strap and you want to just carry it with the handles, you can take it and you can store it here. It comes with an add -a bag system here, which allows you, if this bag gets so heavy, you can kind of put it over the handles of, uh, of, uh, you know, of, uh, of your luggage. And it comes with the main compartment here. So, the front zipper pocket. It's just one big open pocket. It's nothing special about it, it's orange. I've been trying to figure out What's the reason for it being orange? Is it kind of like, and I go back to me's ID lock um, pocket, which their pockets are red, and it's shield against RFID, and they uh, shield and protect against RFID. Um, so the pocket is just orange. That's all it is. It is a very big pocket to store whatever you need. So if you got, hey, you know, pens, pencils, camera, whatever, keys, it can go in this pocket right here. Okay. Your main zipper pocket here, and that's a lot of space right here. Uh, sorry, it opens completely. You have a little key ring here. I never use it to uh, clip your keys. You have a, I guess a cell phone pocket here. You have, over here you have kind of two cell, uh, it's like a elastic pocket, I guess, for whatever you want to put here. So another quick cell phone pocket. Here's another elastic pocket for whatever you need. And then here you have two side pockets, uh, two pin slots. And then of course, to store whatever you need here. This is called their quick stash pocket. And I'm gonna try to get this open for the camera here. So if you can kind of see there in the camera, they have, uh, in this pocket, it's mainly meant for when I read from the website and after talking to the representative, magazines, uh, your papers, 
or passport or whatever. So when you're in line through TSA or whatever and you need that, a quick access, access to something, you can grab it here. There's a few business cards, which would make sense. There's a, a few pen slots. And here is the, I guess, Tumi Tracer system, which there you go. You can kind of see it right there. It's a barcode. You register and hopefully if you lose your bag, somebody will be honest enough. They'll call in that Tumi, uh, call in the Briggs and Raleigh number and it'll actually um, try to reunite, reunite, you, uh, reunite you and your bag. On the back, again, there's just the quick stash pocket here. There's nothing special about this. If you take the uh, strap off, you can kind of fold it up and store it here. You have your Tumi hideaway luggage pocket. I'm oh, sorry, ID uh, tag. So there you go. Kind of mark your bag, say, hey, this bag belongs to John Doe. And there you go. And again, we talked about the added bag system. And now let's look at the storage on the inside. So looking on the inside, you can see it's a pretty wide mouth bag. Um, here, just a very soft fabric pocket to store whatever. I think this is almost considered your tablet pocket here because you can kind of see the material on the inside is more of a soft um, microfiber. So I'm guessing that's exactly what it's gonna be for as a tablet so you don't scratch your screen. Um, I can fit my iPad Air 2 in here. You have a divider here, which you're gonna use for your files right here. And in back right here, this it fits up to a 13 inch laptop. I actually, it will fit the iPad Pro with a keyboard. It will fit your MacBook Pro. Um, so anything beyond that, uh, going up into the 14s or the 15s, I don't, I didn't, uh, I didn't try it and it says it wasn't recommended. So the bag is a great bag. It retains its shape. It's sleek, it's slim, it gives plenty of space. And one thing about myself is I love to be organized. I can definitely see myself being very organized in this bag. And though it's three and a half pounds, with the comfort strap, it feels very light. What I don't like about the bag, it may be too slim for some people. And what I mean about that here is the bag, it looks great. I mean, um, a lot of times I carried it without the handles and it was kind of like, hey, I'm walking into the office, just like, you know, I got my, cause my job, I'm very business casual. Sometimes I'm in a suit. So I'm just kind of walking in, a lot, a lot, a lot, you know, throw my bag on my desk, maybe walk in, get some coffee, or whatever it was great for that but what I noticed is once I put my MacBook uh, Pro in or I had my iPad uh, Pro and I decided now I had a notebook or I had a book that I was reading or you know or I had a camera that was on the outside here and I'll see I have a small camera here and I'll kind of put that here to kind of start you know, that doesn't take up too much space. But you can kind of see it's automatically. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. It kind of starts poking out like this is it right here. So if you put something else bigger than probably an inch and a half, you're going to start losing uh, your shape and the structure of the bag. And if that's what you're getting the bag for, you say, hey, that bag looks nice, it's sleek, and it's sexy. When you put your iPad Pro, you put your MacBook in here. You put a notebook. Most people are going to have headphones. You're going to put a binder. Whatever you're going to put in here, it's gonna start bowing out. And that's what I noticed for, because I said, you know what? I don't carry that much stuff, but the stuff I do carry, the bag kind of started being overstuffed and it kind of started poking out. And at that point, I made me now not want to carry the bag or I kind of said, you know what? I'll leave this bag at home because I need to return back to something else that can keep its structure and stay looking sleek and sexy. So it's a great bag. But that is my major con about the bag. Um, but for those who maybe don't carry that much and you're a light traveler, you don't bring that much stuff into the office and I call them the cell phone and car keys kind of guys that you very, you take the minimals, this may be the great bag for you because now you have enough space, you have enough organization and you can put whatever you need in here. But for people like me who are gadget geeks or you like to carry around stuff because of, here's my thing, if I put in a pair of Beats headphones, let's just say this is them right here 
without the case. If I, I'm going to take this camera out here. If I even try to put them in his front pocket, you kind of see what I'm saying now. It's kind of bowing out. And some people may say, hey, Gabe, well, why don't you just go ahead and put them in the main pocket? Well, if I put them in the main pocket, let's just say I put them right here in my main pocket. Not the iPad protector, but the file and folders pocket. And I got my iPad Pro. You can kind of still see the bag is kind of now poking out a lot more. So there's no give in the bag. It's only you, you're only going to get what you're going to get. <laughs> so, but if... I didn't have to carry around so much stuff or I could say, you know what, I try to carry around the minimal item for what I need, but I don't want to be restricted said I can't carry that because, or well, this is a bag that I can only carry for certain occasions. This is not that type of bag to me. And honestly, I said, I love it that it's ballistic, ballistic nylon, but I do think that there could have been a little bit more accents. It could have, you know, maybe threw some red in here. It could have, you know, this great of ballistic nylon is a lot tougher than what I've seen on a lot of other bags. This almost takes me back to a, just a bag, uh, laptop bags you get from Dell that you buy with your laptop or HP or whatever. And I'm not, I wouldn't spend $229 for this bag because if you're gonna spend $229 for this bag, you could step up and go ahead and add another $100 and go to Toomey or you can go to another high-end kind of luggage store who that's all they actually are catering to and not trying to just say, hey, we're here, here's a laptop bag, but here's a laptop bag that looks good and that you're gonna to wanna to carry and that people are gonna come and say, hey, where'd you get that bag from? You know, I've had a lot of, I've had a bag a lot of times and I think um, one of the bags I'm actually even referring to here is, pick it up here, the Toomey uh, Earl Compact Brief. A lot of times I'm walking with this bag and a lot of people are saying, hey, where'd you get that bag from? What kind of bag is that or, you know, they like that bag because Toomey actually took that extra little step and said, hey, we're not just making bags, we're making bags that are gonna look good. And this is what, even though this bag is very functional and it fits and it does what a lot of people are gonna need, how long are you gonna be, you know, using this bag before your eyes go looking at something else and saying, hey, man, I just spent $229 for this bag, but man, look at that bag there. If I'd have only spent maybe a hundred other dollars, a hundred more dollars, I could have got that bag. So, like I said, for me, on a scale of one to five, I'd probably give this bag maybe. Uh, in functionality, give it a four. In looks, I'd probably give it a two and a half. Because, like I said, it's, it's a great bag, but for me, it just doesn't do it for me. It just doesn't give it that wow factor. But if sleek and slim, functional, and you are a person that only needs to carry the basics and you don't see yourself ever trying to overstuff this bag or carrying more than what this bag will uh, allow you to carry, this may be the bag for you. So this is the Briggs & Riley Small Slam Vertical Brief. I'm Gabe, the bag guy, and I'll see you soon.